Hey man, this time we're going to talk about the other side of the grow coin, hydroponics. There are a lot of options and variations of different styles. Each style is customizable and combinable, and it's up to you to decide what fits your room. Also, all of these pictures are off Google. I'm not advertising for anyone because I don't or haven't used any of these products. I just need a visual aid. If I stole your photos, I apologize. So let's start with some definition. Merriam-Webster defines hydroponics as the growing of plants in nutrient solutions with or without an inert media, such as soil, to provide mechanical support. I have a few issues with this definition, mostly the soil part, because if you're growing in soil, it's not hydroponics no matter what the system is just irrigation i also as a user of neoprene mechanical support isn't the point of the media it's the surface area for root growth not to say that you can't combine hydro and soil you totally can and should if that's your thing i prefer to define it as the growing of plants in a nutrient rich water where the media is inert now i do want to separate the two classifications under the umbrella of hydroponics soilless meaning anything grown in peat cocoa or even charcoal things like soil but without the sand cells or clay of soil and full hydro meaning anything with rock wool, hydrogen, grow stones, you get the point. There are a lot of options of media to choose. Peat moss, skipping the sand, perlite, vermiculite, the favored cocoa. Then in the full hydro side, you have hydrogen, rock wool, which comes in many different styles and shapes, grow stones, which are expanded glass, or just plain neoprene colors, which again is my style. And to be honest, it's pretty damn clean and cheap. So let's go over the styles of hydroponics. Here's a list of difficulty of use, but I changed it to what I thought was more technical because there are things that people forget about in some of these systems. So we're gonna start off with the WIC system. I don't really wanna talk about it much, mostly because it doesn't interest me. It's a very basic system and barely technically a hydro system, but I'll give you the basics. What you have is a reservoir of water below the growing media. This usually uses some potting mix or cocoa, but it can be done with soil just the same. It uses a wick like a rope cloth or anything that can cause capillary action to wet the media based on water's ability to bind itself together and move against gravity. Next up, we have a basic drip, also not exclusively hydroponics and extremely easy. You'll need a pump for this system so that the pump pumps water from the reservoir through the plumbing into the micro tubes at each desired pot or rock wool cubes. You can zone this type of system and there are professional and commercial versions of this available. The nutrient film technique or NFT is often used in commercial lettuce growth. They often combine it with DWC and create a rafting river flow type system that's pretty neat. The system works on the premise that a slow continuous stream of nutrient enriched water can grow a plant in a tray pipe or tub it can be vertical or horizontal in setup deep water culture can be considered one of the simplest systems out there all that's really required for this system is a bucket tray or tub filled with nutrient water and an air stone added because even plants can drown without air it's also something to note that the water must stay below 75 degrees beyond that you might find root rot to be all too prevalent now like dwc our dwc or recirculating dwc connects all the buckets together with a pump in the back pulling the water to the front creating a cycle of water moving through the system ebb and flow and flood and drain the same basic premise but use different orientations ebb and flow uses a pump to push water from the reservoir into buckets using hydrostatic equilibrium of water to keep each bucket level after a certain amount of time the buckets are drained from a second pump sitting in what's called the brain bucket this is done multiple times a day but it varies between growers this style has many commercial options available flood and drain however usually uses a tub or a tray in one pump instead of the two required from the ebb and flow and an overflow pipe. The water is pumped from the reservoir into the inlet and fills up the tray to the level of the drain pipe. Again, this is done multiple times a day, but it varies between media used and personal preference. The point of these systems is emulate a tide rising and falling, wetting the media and then allowing it to dry out. The system is often easier to DIY, but there are commercial versions available. Now on to my specialty, aeroponics. It has two main types and we'll start with low pressure aeroponics. This uses a basic pump and what's called a manifold or pipe layout design that then is drilled into and micro sprinklers are put in. Some designs feature a root chamber separate from the reservoir and some don't. These sprinklers spray the roots with nutrient water for a timed period on and off. Whether it be 15 minutes on and 15 minutes off, five seconds on and two minutes off, the timing is up to the grower to decide. The manifolds can be basic PVC pipes that are placed in an optimum way to make sure to contact and wet all of the roots. Some people will even use traditional sprinkler heads in separate chambers. Some people make elaborate manifolds and some do simpler designs. But if done right, it can make for beautiful root eye candy. 
The basics of a manifold is a closed circuit. Every part needs to hold pressure and you can't exceed the pump's ability of gallons per hour. Then you have to decide on the micro sprinkler. These are the most popular for hydroponics because a version of them is used in most commercial hydro cloners. Depending on your needs, they come in 90, 180, and 360 degrees. Some sprinklers have moving parts like these and they rely on pressure to spin them and spray water. They're easily clogged, but they do work well. I don't recommend these type you can get from Home Depot because they shoot in streams and not an even layer, which can cause uneven moisture of the roots and lead to negative effects. These systems can be utilized in individual buckets or bucket cloners, retrofit commercial grow trays, which is what I do, or use large PVC pipes or square fence posts like you can get at Home Depot, which seems to be the favored style amongst commercial versions. But the growth rate is fast, the water usage is significantly reduced, and the nutrients can be cut in half. And you have the option of viewing your root health, which makes great for showing off. Now, the only difference between low pressure and high pressure aeroponics is the water droplet size. High pressure creates water droplet sizes of anything less than 50 microns in diameter. They create fogs or mists, which we'll get back to in a minute. So let's go over the basic system layout and the equipment required. This is the biggest reason it's not utilized more often. It has a lot of parts and they're pretty pricey. This by far is the best diagram I found for this system, but this one makes it look like a circuit, which is nice for some people and is slightly more basic. So let's go over the parts. Starting off, you'll need a reservoir of some kind obviously something needs to hold the nutrient water and you'll be drilling into it so you need a bulkhead to reduce the leaks. I like the push to connect ones because most of my system runs off of that semi-rigid tubing so it works well for me and all of the parts are easy to take apart but PVC will work as just as well if not better. Next you'll need a screen filter for any fine particles that fall from the roots or sludge up your system. It'll save you from having clogged nozzles every other day. There are many choices, some are more expensive but I use this one just fine and it fits right into my push to connect system and it's easy to remove the filter and clean. Next you'll need a pump that can do up to 100 psi. I say 80 but that's the minimum you should do. It's also a push to connect, so again, it fits my system. This is one that has a male thread so you can connect a filter and a PVC pipe right to it. After that, you'll need to get a pressure switch to tell the pump to shut off when the system's at full pressure. I use this one because it's made for my pump. There are a few others, but to be completely honest, I don't know how they work because I've never looked into them after I got my initial one. And since you're dealing with high pressures, you'll need a gauge to tell you what your system's running at. I use it mostly to tell if my system's drained out completely. I don't find it's completely necessary, but I use this one because again, it's a push to connect. This is one of those products that I find easier to find in PVC versions and can be totally used for any other system outside of it if you're wondering what pressure your pump is running at. Now you wanna hold the pressure so your pump's not running constantly and that's when you need an accumulator. A lot of companies have a version that are a bunch of different sizes. I've seen a one liter up to 40 gallons, but I use this one and it's a 4.4 gallon accumulator. All of the accumulator tank is is a water chamber that has a pre-pressurized internal bladder that are installed on the pressure side of the pump to dampen the water pressure spikes, reduce pump cycling, and help increase the pump's life. In other words, it holds pressure of your system so your pump doesn't have to work as hard. Now, safety first, you'll need a pressure override valve, which essentially, if your pump accidentally pushes too much pressure into the system, this valve will open and release the pressure. So you've created a whole system that's now pressurized. How do you control the timing? You use this piece, the solenoid. This piece is the gatekeeper, literally, to the misters. When the timer comes on, the valve opens and allows the pressure to push water through the lines into the misters and onto the roots. You can buy cheap or commercial versions. They do the same thing. They just need to be connected to what's called a cycle timer. These timers do seconds and minutes instead of the usual minutes and hours. There are a lot of options, but an inexpensive dial type hasn't failed me yet. I set mine for 10 seconds on and three to five minutes off, depending on what the plants look like. We talked about sprinklers before, but for this system it requires specific style misters. I like the plastic ones because they won't corrode over time, but there are a ton of options that need different fittings to install, so it's up to the grower to decide what his design requires. I use these ones. I like the four-way angle because I can put them down the center and get pretty good coverage. They also pop right off with a little force, so it's easy to clean and purge the lines in the system to get a nice cleaning every grow. Not only do they spray in different angles and different micron sizes, but they also do mist types, which you can kind of see in the pictures. The softer the mist, the better. The smaller the micron, the more efficient the process will be. They also disperse at different angles. These are all things to keep in mind when you're designing your system. This is how I did my system. I kept it in the lower half of my cabinet. It runs into a manifold inside of a 2x2 flood tray. Having more depth for the roots to hang is ideal, but it requires more space, which I didn't have at the moment. These pictures are 40 days apart. As you can 
can see the growth is explosive. Some other notes about aeroponics system is that it's very hard to run organics. Make sure to use a very clean nutrient line. Agricultural grade salts are the best, but some people have problems with that. And run everything at half your usual strength. A little goes a long way in this system. Now you've seen what options are available to you. Which system are you interested in? Did I get something wrong? Let me know with an explanation so I can learn from my mistakes. Next time, I'll show you all the bits and pieces I've collected for these systems and how they work. But for now, grow it funky and keep it fresh.